Hi everyone, Michael Stever here coming to you from blisteringly hot New York City where record setting temperatures are turning everyone into a bunch of sweaty scream queens. Now, in a perfect world, our beloved scream queens would be relegated strictly to our favorite horror films. But the truth is, you never know where they're going to turn up. Now, according to Wikipedia, a scream queen is an actress that is usually associated with horror films, often playing some variation on the damsel in distress. And while my friend Jan Broberg's body of work has not been exclusively relegated to the horror genre, there's truly something special about this thespian cohort of mine, and I am incredibly proud of her. Jan is currently starring opposite Elijah Wood in Frank Calhoun's bloody remake of the epic 1980 cult hit Maniac. And if you think being tortured at the hands of Frodo Baggins is bizarre, wait till you find out what happened to Jan when she was just 12 years old. It's not a pretty story, but it's one you want to watch because of the inspiring way that Jan has parlayed some truly twisted life experiences into a performance that's, well, let's just say tearing the lid off the competition. Paul Boots on and my Valentino scarf, and I'm feeling like a producer. It doesn't happen very often that somebody is discovered, you know, sitting at a soda shop. <laughs> if you're an actor, Every experience that you have adds to your emotional ability. The call back today, 2.15, for a blockbuster feature film, non-disclosed. It's a big secret. Hi! <laughs> Take out the gum. How's that gum? You really have to get good at just going to whatever's next, which is maybe why I have such a fabulous short-term memory, and my long-term memory is shot. Where's the white shirt? What did I do with the white shirt? Did I not bring the white shirt? I've got this many clothes on. Totally look at all the clothes and stuff because of all the all the different auditions and stuff. See, you have to have stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking banana bread to my um, agents for Valentine's Smart. Day. Since there is no rhyme or reason to it, the journey is just not to stop. I know, we're late. Almost. And I'm painting my nails, yes I know. But how do you do the premiere of Maniac without red nails? I have a really good life. I'm a happy girl, you know? <laughs> If you don't have kind of the discipline to get up at the crack of dawn and to go through whether it's looking at your actor sites that have breakdowns and submitting yourself or being in touch with your manager, your agents and kind of just really being proactive. It takes a tremendous amount of discipline and a lot of um, you have to develop a really thick skin because you have to get up and do it the next day. and. You know, nine times out of ten, or 99 times out of a hundred, the answer is no. Networking is like the most important part of my business plan in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Talent is enough if you're in a smaller market because pretty soon everybody knows you and, and they just have you come in for everything. Even if you're five years too old or five years too young, you're still in the room if you're in a small market. But here, you can't get in the room without doing a lot of business yep. activity. I'm having a good time doing what I love, which really the the work of the actor in any, whether it's Los Angeles, and I'm sure the same is true in New York or Chicago, is the audition. That's your work. I get to at least, you know, live my dream by being here and going to auditions and waiting for what's coming around the corner. And, you know, I have big dreams. Yeah. And I get to do it going to a little premiere tonight at Warner Brothers for one of my films with you.
Well, let's see. We'll just see. We'll just try. Put up here. City so streets. See streets of New York. Very cool. Very cool. Subway. Oh, we should have yeah. ducked down we there. We should have gone down the subway. <laughs> That's what they always do in the movies. They do? just go on Friends the subway, subway and they just run away. We should have. Cool. Hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Looper. I'm the uh, screenwriter and producer and an actor in uh, the film My Only Son. Uh, Jan actually plays uh, my mother in the film. Uh, the character is Rhonda. And uh, the film tells the true story, or it's based on a true story, of a childhood friend and his battle during the onset of schizophrenia. What is going on? Stop it, Cliff. You're with them. Stop! It's me, sweetie, it's me. Stop! Oh, honey, Cliff, stop! It's me, Cliff! You, you betrayed me. Listen. You turned everyone against me. Clifton, listen to me. I don't know what is going on, but I'm here. Okay, okay. I'm here. When we saw Jan's audition, we knew immediately this was the person, she was the one. Um, she brought that depth of emotion. I've had some, you know, scary experiences in my life and some difficult, as, you know, everyone has, but mine have some particularly <laughs> terrifying <laughs> turns. In 1974, when my next guest was 12 years old, she was kidnapped by a trusted family friend. The man picked her up from a piano lesson, drugged her, and kept her for 55 days as the two of them lived in a motor home traveling from Idaho to Mexico. During the two months that I was held captive, this man brainwashed me, uh, convincing me to believe in aliens um, and that it was my duty to have a child with him to save an alien planet. She was finally freed by Mexican police cooperating with the FBI and returned to her family. It gets stranger. Later, at age 14, she was kidnapped again by the same man. Truth is stranger than fiction. I don't know that I knew what being kidnapped was. I certainly knew she was gone, and I do remember one time when I went downstairs where her bedroom was and and I saw my dad lying on her bed crying and uh, I knew that that was significant. Keep in mind that this man and his entire family had been our best friends for two and a half years prior to this experience. All of the brainwashing, the seeds had been planted prior to waking up in the back of that motorhome, strapped to the bed with an ivory box playing in my ear in a high-pitched monotone voice that uh, I had been kidnapped by a UFO and was to do everything they told me, and if I didn't, I would be instantly vaporized. I mean, that was real. Though you know, and what would happen if I told about the aliens or about the mission or whatever, and what would happen would my little sister would be taken, you know, because she also was like me to do the mission, or my middle sister would go blind, or, you know, my father would be killed. I mean, there were certain things that I was, you know, absolutely dedicated to protecting my family and to fulfilling the mission. I'm struck by how many children from very religious households mm -hmm. are, I guess, targeted first of all, but, but seem susceptible uh, in a way to the, uh, to the, uh, what are they? The, the workings of a madman? Work, well, <laughs> of a fanatic? For, for, somebody, mm -hmm. for somebody who wants to, t to prey on their minds. Absolutely. Do you know what that's about? Well, I think any time that you're taught to have faith in something, you should also be taught to find facts. If you're going to be taught to believe in something, you better be taught to question it as well. And when you go through something like that, that is so unique and so truly terrifying, it carves out caverns and caves almost in your in your soul, in your being, that are so frightening that you kind of work for the rest of your life trying to fill them in and patch them up and, and stop up the, you know, and get back to the surface. During that period of time where, yes, I was seeing counselors and therapists and whatever, but not telling them anything, it's not like that did anything for me. What my therapy really was, was being on stage. She has told me that acting saved her life. I think being kidnapped and being um, 
put through some of those experiences that children aren't supposed to experience um, taught her a, a huge range of emotions and and prepared her for acting in a way that I don't think you know you, you don't plan for and certainly don't want to have had it that way but it certainly is has uh, served her in her acting because she's she has such depth with every character and such compassion. Down in California she went to a private school with he nuns. Why Birchfield was down doing whatever he did in Mexico or whatever. He enrolled her in it. She was there playing a role. Um, the whole time she was kidnapped she was playing a role. She played her role so well that the nuns when they found out that she was actually a kidnapped victim and that she had this family wondering where she was they didn't believe it. Her acting has been huge in um, getting over and and getting past and through and helping her through hard times and um, you know moving on and yeah I definitely think it's uh, it has helped and has been healthy for her in the end. Where I emoted my rage, my anger, my disappointment, my deep sadness of what was happening to me and the terror that I was experiencing and you know all the icky things that were happening to me you know sexually into my body into my mind and and this huge weight on my shoulders that I was carrying by myself you know as a 12 13 14 year old girl um, trying to save a planet and protect my family if I had not had my stage as my therapy office I, I, I wouldn't be alive. I mean, it literally saved my life, and that's no lie. I felt terrified before. I mean, truly, sincerely, I know what that feels like. But I can get in touch with those deep, deep feelings of fear and emotion, and I can let them out when needed. When needed. horror films. <laughs> They're for a very specific type of entertainment and a specific type of crowd. You know, the first time that I really did a scene where there was a lot of blood and gore and it was highly emotional was Slaughter of the Innocents. I remember uh, seeing for the first time uh, the Slaughter of the Innocents when I was a kid and I think I kind of snuck and watched it somehow. I come home on this kind of rainy night in a station wagon with some groceries and I come into my home and I can hear the TV but I don't hear either of my daughter's voices and I come around from the kitchen set the groceries down and there I see I don't even know what I'm seeing because it's so much blood on the walls Stephanie? and I'm seeing almost like body parts and I Finally, I, my eyes finally focus on the, the face, the body of one of my daughters. And I just lose it. <laughs> we did that in one take. It, it scarred me for life. They didn't tell me it was Maniac. We had no idea what it was. I didn't know this film, and because I didn't know the whole story, and because I only get so many pages when you audition, you don't even, I mean, I had no, I really didn't even know if it was a psychological drama or a horror film. We definitely didn't watch a lot of horror movies. I don't want anybody to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. We were, you know, Little House on the Prairie and, and uh, The Wonderful World of Disney. I don't like to believe that things like that happen in the world or could happen. And I was commenting in the audition about, you know, the fact that this guy, what, goes dumpster diving to get body parts to restore, <laughs> this is creepy, you know, I mean, it was just kind of like, oh, that's creepy, you're perfect for my, my client. I'm in restoration. <laughs> so tell me, Fred, how does the restoration process take place? Do you go dumpster diving in department store garbage bins in search of used parts? They're <laughs> antiques, so you wouldn't find them in dumpsters. Honestly, I just find the whole thing really creepy. You and Anna, 
are a perfect fit. I guess it made the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't seen the movie yet. <laughs> the whole thing, so. Only what I did in the studio when I went in to do more groaning and screaming and moaning and, you know, do some ADR work that I saw my couple of my scenes. So Which scenes really did you good. see? Um, I saw the scene where he's in my apartment watching me and then comes in to where I'm taking a bath and tries to drown me. <gasps> After she filmed it, I talked to her on the phone. And so she told me everything that happened. And she said that she had done her own stunt and that she was held under the water for like 30 seconds. And you know, they have this, I guess when you do your stunts, you have your safety, whatever, and she didn't have to use that. But she said after she was in the bathtub scene that Elijah Wood started clapping and they were all going, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. Cut, yeah. I think it's really exciting that my mom got to play this part and be a part of this, you know, the remake of Maniac. You know, I think it's kind of humorous almost. <laughs> In a, in a sick and twisted way, which, you know, is maniac. Anyway, the fact that so many years later, I get the chance to do a part where I am face-to-face -face with a sociopath on screen. I felt it, and so I think it is easier when you've really felt it for any extended period of time, which I, you know, mine was a four-year period of terror. Yeah, I do think that that helped me. Elijah Wood and I spent time together in the you know, hair and makeup trailer talking, but we didn't talk about the scene. We didn't talk about rehearsal. I was just wondering why Elijah said he felt like horror films were such an important genre, what that means to him. I mean, I think at, at, at its best, horror has uh, articulated our collective fear, you know, and, and has at times been commentary on what we've collectively been going through politically, socially at given times and sort of echoed our fears. Now I think that's horror at its very best. Um, it doesn't always rise to those heights, but I don't think it has to rise to those sort of social larger heights to be great either. I don't know, I mean I think it can be an interesting exploration of the darker experiences that we encounter, the darker elements of our own human psyche, and, you know, catharsis, yeah. ways to deal with the things that we're afraid of in a safe environment, yeah, exactly. you know. It's more about getting to know that person, and then when you're in that scene with them, there's a trust or a feeling of, of, of um, I can access these emotions in a safe way, and they're going to be extreme. I think one of my favorite scenes is uh, is Rita's killing the victim's physique, which is not what you're usually used to seeing. I think in in, in these in in these you know slasher movies. I loved Frank, Frank Calhoun. He was a fantastic director, and he was really able to let me really take it, and trusted me that I knew how to do it. He knows how to create that kind of. The men and women at K and B, which was you know where I went to for those fittings to get the cast taken of my head, and then the all of the different layers from the wig department and every strand of hair was replicated. So the day of you know the filming, I've got these guys laying on the ground by the side of the bed that are all mine. That are yeah, that are you know pumping the the blood just in the right amount so it's coming down. Seeing Jan scalped, um, <laughs> that, I mean, it, it, I don't know if I'll be able to watch it. I, <laughs> I might have to close my eyes. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what to think about that. I don't know. It's my mom, you know? I felt incredibly safe on the set, which was a big deal. You gotta feel safe before you can give the kind of out of control, emotional, you know, wad that was there to shoot. <laughs> You're in the scene and you got somebody with a, you know, a big hunting knife to your head. <laughs> and you, you know, you let yourself be there. It makes it so much more real and, and, 
and evokes such uh, feelings, I think, that it's one of my favorite scenes, one of the strongest scenes in, in the film. <laughs> Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm gonna keep you. Yeah, she she definitely has uh, one of those screams where yeah it, it uh, gives you goosebumps. I could be a scream queen. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> to imagine that Jan would someday become a scream queen is quite um, shocking and amazing. And yet knowing Jan and all of her range and having seen her scream quite often. I feel great about it. <laughs> I feel excited. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally excited. I, I had such a great time doing it. I would not trade getting scalped by Elijah Wood for really anything. Maybe world peace. 